Well, I just got back from a very surprising cruise, something that I did not expect happen on this cruise. It was my 27th cruise, but my first with Princess Cruises, I was sailing on board the Diamond Princess, and uh, I'm gonna tell you all about it. This is my official review, my full review of my cruise experience, my very first cruise on board Princess Cruises on the Diamond Princess. Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am the traveling man. 27 cruises. I don't know why it took me 27 cruises to try out Princess Cruises, but uh, I'm glad my 27th was the Diamond Princess and I finally got to try out Princess. Just by happenstance, actually. I was actually booked with another cruise line to sail in Japan. This was like a dream bucket list trip of mine to sail in Japan. I'd had this booked for a couple years uh, and then that cruise line ultimately like booted me. They oversold my stateroom. And I was like, what do I do? I know I still wanted to go to Japan. I still wanted to cruise in Japan. But honestly, there aren't a lot of options when you want to cruise in Japan. Uh, but one of the options was the Diamond Princess. And as I did my research, I discovered that the Diamond Princess uh, actually a ship built in Japan. It was actually built in Nagasaki, which was uh, coincidentally one of the ports that we visited on this cruise. Uh, but the ship built in Nagasaki, one of two princess cruises built in Japan by Mitsubishi. And for the past 10 years, the Diamond Princess has been taking uh, guests both in Japan and from all around the world to destinations all around Japan and in Korea and other parts of Asia. I said all that to say, I did not book this cruise setting out to finally sell on Princess. I, I knew I wanted to try it eventually because I want to try all the cruise lines at some point. I have so many things to tell you about this cruise experience. I've been so excited to make this video. Couldn't wait to tell you all about it. So I'm just going to jump right into it. If you've never watched one of my videos before, well, welcome. I'm glad that you clicked on this one and I'm glad that you're watching this one. But how I review a cruise is through my five steps process and it is an acronym where the S stands for ship. We'll talk all about the Diamond Princess and the experience I had on board her. The T stands for taste, and of course we'll talk about food. The E is for entertainment, and I'll tell you all about the activities and entertainment on board the ship and break that down for you. The P is for ports, and uh, got a lot of great things to share there. And then the S is going to be for service, where we'll talk about the crew and just the overall uh, service experience on board Diamond Princess. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump right on in with that S. We're going to talk about the ship, the beautiful Diamond Princess. Now I'll say beautiful. Uh, when I was going to be going on the cruise and I was looking up the Diamond Princess, I was kind of worried. I was like, oh, like it's a really old ship. Like it was built in 2004. The Diamond Princess has some history. Uh, you can go look that up. I'm not going to get into that. However, it has been very well maintained. Uh, you know, the decor and stuff might look like it came from 2000s, the early 2000s, but the ship itself is in very great shape. They've kept the ship like top notch. It was very clean everywhere you went. Uh, everything was very beautiful. Uh, a lot of very ornate uh, finishings, especially there in the atrium. Because the ship is sort of dedicated to selling in Japan, all the signage on the ship, or most all the signage, is in both English and Japanese. So you walk on and you might be looking at like a map of the ship. That's going to be in Japanese as well as English. So I thought that was very cool. Most of the people selling on this ship, and there were 2,700 of us, most of those were Japanese. In fact, there were like 1,100 uh, Japanese selling on board this cruise. Just a little over 500 of us from the USA. There were around about 200 Canadians, almost 200 Australians, and then just a little over 100 folks from the UK. Probably one of the most diverse cruises that I've ever taken in my life, and it was really cool. I really enjoyed that and getting to meet people from all over the world on this cruise. Now, while we had over 2,700, the ship never felt crowded. I will say the only area where things got crowded was the theater. Every night in the theater, no matter what the show was, folks were in that theater early because I would go in there. Sometimes I push my luck with the theater. I'm like, I'm just one person. Surely I can find a seat, not on Diamond Princess. The people on this cruise were going to the theater. So that was the only place where crowding was an issue. But other than that, the ship handled 2,700 perfectly. Now we'll say, because there is a dated aesthetic to the ship, it is a kind of a classic cruise vibes. It gives you that. And I've only said that about a couple of ships since I've been reviewing cruise ships. So I think the last one that I said that about was probably the uh, Enchantment of the Seas Royal Caribbean. Uh, it's a classic cruise vibes. And by that, I mean, there's a lot of like lounges on this ship. I feel like you saw that a lot on older cruise ships. So like, you know, every 15 feet you would walk and like, oh, there's another lounge there. Oh, there's another bar and lounge here. There's a lounge back there. I like that, honestly, because each of the lounges are like themed differently. There was the Skywalker's Lounge, which was on the very top of the ship, on the back of the ship. Reminded me a lot of the Crown, if you've been uh, on Royal Caribbean ships. You know, they have the Crown at the very top of, I think, all their cruise ships. It's like a lounge up there. Reminded me of that. It's a good vantage point over the rest of the ship. So I really enjoyed that. 
But yeah, classic cruise vibes galore on board Diamond Princess. And while she might be old in appearance, she is way up to date on technology. I mean, the best technology probably that I've experienced at sea. Why weren't y'all telling me that Princess was this advanced with technology? I don't know if you know this about me, but I love technology. Like I like to have the latest and greatest. I am always like one of the first adopters of any new technology. And so I was just thrilled with the technology that Princess uses on board their ship. We'll start with the Wi-Fi because I know that's very important to people. Uh, the Wi-Fi was probably the best and most reliable Wi-Fi that I've ever had on a cruise before. Of course, this is powered by Starlink, like most cruise ships are today, but it was just unbelievably fast, reliable everywhere. I never had any days where it dropped off. I mean, we had very stormy conditions some days, uh, very cloudy the first sea day, and still the internet was fantastic. The medallion and everything that's a part of the medallion on board a Princess Cruise is just amazing. So basically they sent me this before the cruise. It's just a little chip or well, medallion, and uh, you can wear it a lot of different ways. They'll give you like a free lanyard to wear it in. Uh, they actually sell some other accessories like the band, the wristband, and that's actually what I purchased to wear mine in. So it almost was like a, if you've ever been to Disney and had the magic band, it was almost like that. This technology utilizes NFC or near field communications. So uh, it knows where you're at. It has like GPS built in. It knows where you're at around the ship. I would be like maybe three or four doors away from my actual cabin and it would know I was coming and like unlock my door. I would hear my door click like five seconds or so before I ever got to the door. So that was amazing. I never had to put a C pass or key card in anywhere like that chip just knew I was there. It also made it easier to just wear that on my arm all day. Like I got up in the morning, put that on my arm. And every time I left the stateroom, I didn't have to like do the padding of the pockets to make sure I had my C pass card or whatever. So I really like that aspect of it. Just unlocking the door. They were utilizing it in the main theater sometimes to know who was in the room. So like they did some prize giveaways and stuff. There was no like dropping your name in a hat or anything like that for raffles. They would just go on their little iPad or whatever and be like, okay, this person's in the room, you won the prize. Amazing stuff, just utilizing it like that. But it goes even deeper because they have this thing called Ocean Now Delivery, which was amazing. And basically you can pay to opt in for this. I think it was like 12 or 15 bucks. You pay like the first time, just like an activation fee. And after that, you can get food, room service food, of course, but you can get drinks from like any bar on board the ship. You can get basically whatever you want delivered to you anywhere you are on the cruise ship. Now, there is an exception to this because the only place that I couldn't get delivery was in the theater. I was in the theater one night. I thought I was going to be slick, go to the theater, sit down, and then order my soda to be brought to me in the theater. It didn't work that way. You can't get stuff delivered in the theater. You have to get it on your way to the theater. But even in your stateroom, I used it so much in my stateroom and you order it on the app. That's the coolest part. You go in the app on the princess app. You can order and add stuff to your cart, check out. It's just like DoorDash or Uber Eats and it's free. Now, of course, I think if you don't have a drink package or whatever, you still have to pay for like drinks or sodas and stuff like that. But yeah, it was just really cool. I was so fascinated with that. You could be on a lounge chair on the top deck of the ship, like at the very back of the ship, the most remote area on the ship and they will find you using your medallion. Isn't that cool? I thought it was tremendous. So enough about the technology. I'll just tell you it's great and that's gonna be the thing that brings me back time and time again to Princess. I honestly can't believe more cruise lines have not adopted that technology yet. I understand that there might be uh, another cruise line or two that's utilizing something similar now. Uh, I'll see about that later this year. Now for this cruise, I'd originally booked into a balcony stateroom and then uh, Princess does the bid up program, you know, like a lot of other cruise lines do, where you essentially get the option to bid on a stateroom upgrade. So I did that before the cruise and for only $400, uh, I got to move up to a mini suite. And a mini suite is a huge room. That's like a full suite on most other cruise lines. Like, you know, I've, I've stayed in, a couple of other suite staterooms just this year and I think this mini suite was just about as big if not bigger than those rooms. And y'all, can I talk about the bedding? Because Princess Cruises has the best bedding of anyone else. Any bed I've ever slept in, and I've slept in a lot of beds on cruise ships, Princess Cruises has the best bedding. Those pillows, the like comforters were so plush and comfy. The bed, you just like got into that bed at night and just like, it was like sleeping on a cloud. You just like sunk into it and magically woke up the next morning. I was very happy with the room. The bathroom was like the most disappointing part of the room though, because it was very dated. Just a fantastic room and I really enjoyed getting to stay seven nights in there. One other thing that I wanted to talk about under ship, I think it probably fits most appropriate here, is the value that you get 
for the Princess Plus and the Princess Premier packages. Now these are uh, like upgrade packages essentially. So let's say you book a cruise right now on Princess. You know, you don't get anything with it, right? You just get your room. Uh, there's no, you know, drinks or Wi-Fi or anything like that included. Now you could upgrade, uh, I think it's like 50 or $60 a day to Princess Plus. Don't quote me on that. Uh, and you get some perks, but I upgraded all the way up to Princess Premier, and that gives you everything, y'all. I mean, you get the like top level drinks package that includes all the soda, coffee, specialty coffee, you know, any alcohol, anything you want to drink on that ship is going to be included, most likely, in that premium drink package that you get under the Premier package. You also get premium Wi Fi, the fastest Wi Fi, and like I said, the most reliable Wi Fi, and not just one device. This got me, like, I was blown away by this. Not just one device, like the other cruise lines will say, oh yeah, you get all included in the premium Wi-Fi. You get one device, that's it. Not on the Princess Premier package. You get four devices of unlimited fastest Wi-Fi on the ship. But also with that Princess Premier package, you also got like unlimited premium desserts. On the nights when they were having a stage production show, they did have reserved seating as part of the Princess Premier. Guess how much that cost me? That was just $80 a night. So the total for seven days was just $580. And I know you might be thinking that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but you compare that to what you're gonna pay on the other cruise lines, and that's a tremendous value. I don't know that Princess isn't losing money with that, you know, because I'm like, so many things are included, you get so many perks with that. You can't even get like the drink package alone on most other cruise lines for $580. You can't even get four devices of premium Wi-Fi. So get that Princess Premier if you're going on a Princess Cruise because I promise you it's worth it. And it was just so nice to have four devices of Wi-Fi and not be shuffling between devices all cruise long. All right, so with all that said, uh, my rating for the ship, and I would have given higher for this because of the technology and like that Princess Premier, the value of that, and just the, uh, the vibe on board the ship, I would have given higher, but the aesthetic and the age of the ship, the best I can give, and I gave it the best I could give it, uh, is a very solid 3.8 out of a five rating for the Diamond Princess. Now next up is the tea for taste, and we're gonna talk about the food, and I will say, before we go into this, this is gonna be just a very quick summary overall of the food I had on board the ship. I will do another video where we'll go in depth and I'll show you like every meal and talk about every meal I had on board the cruise. That'll be out soon. I can't say it was the best food at sea. I wanted to. There were like tremendous highs with the food. Like, you know, the prime rib, for example, on the very first night of the cruise, that was like the best piece of prime rib I've ever had in my life. And I'm like, oh yeah, we're off to the races now. Like princess food is gonna be the best. But then I had other experiences where the food was a letdown and it wasn't as great. The food's not quite on the level of celebrity cruises. It doesn't quite reach that level, I don't think. But we'll see. I'm definitely going to be trying more Princess Cruises in the future, so that might change. Maybe that was just the food on this ship. But that's that's what we're reviewing, right? We're reviewing the Diamond Princess and that experience. So not the best food at sea, but like I said, there were highlights. The prime ribs, certainly. There were also amazing blueberry pancakes that I had. I think the first sea day, they had breakfast in the main dining room. Amazing blueberry pancakes. And when I first bit into them, it was like this moment of shock, like my mouth dropped because I was like, these are like real pancakes. These aren't, you know what I'm talking about. Like you go to the main dining room and on most cruise ships and you order pancakes, it's from frozen. They've just heated those up and it's not the best quality pancakes. Y'all, these taste like homemade, like someone was back there like pouring the batter. There was also one night in the main dining room where they had chicken nanban and I'd never had this before. Y'all, that was like probably one of the best like dinners that I've ever had in a main dining room before. Like that was a perfect dish and I loved it so much. And that same night they actually had for dessert, uh, again, in the main dining room, they had some carrot cake. And that was like better than any specialty dining uh, dessert that I've ever had on any cruise ship. So again, very high highs uh, when it comes to the food on board a Princess Cruise. Also had like the best muesli. I love muesli. The only time I ever eat it is when I'm on a cruise. It's usually on the buffet. But the best muesli I've ever had was in the main dining room for breakfast on the last day of the cruise. And then they had the sushi restaurant on board. And Kai Sushi actually uh, falls under what they call casual dining on board a Princess Cruise. And you get unlimited casual dining with that Princess Premier. So in addition to all that other stuff I said, and I promise I'm not a salesman for Princess Premier. I'm just blown away by it. But in addition to all the other stuff you get, you can also get unlimited casual dinings. And that included uh, the lunch at Kai Sushi, which was like a $15 cover charge. And then also the dinner, which was even more than that. So I went for dinner one night and then I went for lunch on the final sea day. Tremendous, like the best sushi I've ever had. They had like a, I think they called it a surf and turf roll that had like beef on top of the roll. It was just really good. I 
would have eaten there every day had I discovered it earlier, but unfortunately I only went later in the cruise and discovered it. But really good sushi there and I really enjoyed that. And because we were sailing in Japan on a cruise that was curated more for folks living in Japan, you know, that's where I think uh, Princess does a really good job and why this cruise was so different and like what the cultural offerings and the, the food offerings and everything is because they know that like most of the people sailing on this cruise are going to be from Japan. It's not like the other cruise lines that just occasionally sell in Japan and it's just a lot of Americans and folks from all around the world that fly there to cruise. A lot of folks from Japan take Princess on their vacation. It's like their trusted cruise line uh, that leaves year after year. It's always there uh, from Tokyo. So I thought that was really cool. And because of that, they had a really good mix of, uh, you know, American food. And I'll say like your, you know, typical food that you find on a cruise ship. Like you go to the buffet on a cruise ship, there's certain things you expect to find there because it's across every cruise that you go on. Uh, they had that stuff and then they also had a lot of Japanese offerings. So I was really glad that I got to try a lot of Japanese food on this trip, not only when we were in port, but also when we were on the cruise. Now also included in my princess premiere were two specialty dining uh, credits, essentially. I got to go to two specialty dinings and there were only two specialty dining venues when you take away the sushi, which I don't include in specialty dining. Uh, but there was an Italian restaurant called Sabatini's and then there was also the steakhouse. And the steakhouse is called Sterling Steakhouse when I booked it. Then I get on board and realize that it's like in the Lido area, like they close half of the buffet at night and convert that to the steakhouse. It was a very odd setup. I've never seen anything like it before. Brazilian steakhouse where they bring all the different cuts of meat around to you, uh, which was pretty good. They had like a salad bar set up like they do at those restaurants if you go on land. Good food, um, good service in there, but the setup was very odd to me. So. That was an area where I was like, I, I get it's like an older ship and uh, space on board is limited, but it was kind of odd eating in the main buffet uh, at night for specialty dining. And then the Italian restaurant, Sabatini's, was incredible. I ate there on the very last night of the cruise. And again, that's one where I was like, man, had I eaten here earlier, I probably would have gone back because it was really good food. Uh, the service in there was pretty good too. I think they were very busy the night that I went. It was pretty packed in there, so it was slow at times. One of the highlights for the food, a lot of y'all told me about this, and I was like, okay, I was getting a lot of messages because I always talk about the pizza on a cruise ship. Like every time I go on a cruise, I'm like, oh, the pizza, I tried the pizza, or they don't have pizza past midnight, whatever. Um, and a lot of people were like, well, you need to try Princess because they have the best pizza and I'm like how could it be the best pizza it's it all tastes the same but y'all they're like this like princess is like up here because that pizza was incredible I mean it was greasy it was like a perfect I got like a slice of pepperoni it was like a New York slice of pizza fantastic very thin and very cheesy and greasy pepperoni oh, fantastic so yeah princess definitely has the best pizza at sea I can certainly tell you that and then I already talked about ocean now delivery when I was talking about the ship, but again, I'll reiterate how fantastic that was. And also, they had peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I know it was for the little ones, but I ate a lot of those because I was like, I haven't had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a long time. So I was constantly getting those Ocean Now delivered to my room and enjoyed that. So I'm going to give food on board Diamond Princess another solid 3.8 out of a 5 rating. Next up is the E for entertainment. And, uh, Wow, that's what I'll start off by saying. The best stage production shows at sea, no joke. Like the singers and all the performers, which there were a lot. It was probably the biggest cast I've ever seen on stage production shows too. They had a huge cast, phenomenal. Like the vocalists were just so good. And I said in one of my videos, I'm not a big fan of like singing shows. And I know there are a lot of those on a cruise ship. So you're like, what? But I'm not a big fan of that. But I was like captivated by these shows because the singing was so good. The vocalists were so good. The shows themselves, they were just arranged so well. It wasn't one of these hokey performances that they do on a lot of cruise ships that you leave and you're like, okay, that was, you know, bravo, bravo, that was pretty good. These were like, wow, that was fantastic. So some of the best stage production shows that I've ever seen. Now they had two stage production shows throughout the course of the cruise. They also had a lot of guest entertainers. They had like some dancing in there. One night, actually the night we were in South Korea, they brought like a group of like, Korean folklore singers and musicians on board the ship and they performed and I that was fantastic I went in there before dinner I listened to some of this and I was like whoa I've never seen that before I've never seen a cruise ship like bring folks from the country where we were it's because we were staying overnight there that night but to bring folks on board and let them perform in the main theater. Another thing that I really enjoyed that Princess did on the very first sea day, they did like a princess orientation for us first time cruisers where, you know, you go in the main theater and they're talking about medallion and how that works. They're talking about, 
you know, the restaurants and dining, how that works, excursions. They even had like a fun game where they had some of the officers come on stage and you had to guess based upon some of the things they said they did on the show, like what their job was. So they made it really cool. It's very interactive. They used that near field communication with the medallion to like give away some prizes. It was very cool. The destination series that they had, y'all, I'm a sucker for cultural things geography, history, you put me in a room with that, I'm set. I love that stuff on a sea day, especially when you're selling in a place like Japan. Uh, they had this guy on board. He knew all about Japan and the destinations we were going to. So that was fantastic to get to go to that. And I'm really glad that they offered that. Of course, they also had many other activities. They had trivia every night. They had special games with uh, some of the officers. The last night of the cruise, they had like a variety show with the officers and some of the production cast. So a very lively cruise for entertainment. They always had so much going on. Now there were two cruise directors on board this cruise. I've never seen that before. But because we were sailing in Japan with a majority of the guests being Japanese, uh, they had a Japanese speaking cruise director and then they also had an English speaking cruise director. Now that could take up a little bit more time because of course usually they would make, the same with announcements, they would make the announcement first uh, in English and then the Japanese announcement will be made just after. So that was really cool. I really enjoyed having two cruise directors and it was really cool to see and hear, you know, a lot of Japanese. I don't understand Japanese. I know very few words, but it was still cool. And then finally, I'm grouping this under entertainment. The Princess Prizes was very cool. Again, part of the Princess Premier Package, you get access or you sort of buy in, I guess you could say, to the Princess Prizes. And essentially, this is like a a, literally a door prize, y'all. But anytime you open your door, it like sees if you're a winner. So basically it's like a scratch off ticket every time you open up your stateroom door. They, someone told me you can even win like free cruises and things like that, but it's usually money on board credit. Uh, and I really enjoyed doing that. I would open my door like 15 times a day uh, on the days where that was active to see if I was a winner. So for all those reasons, I am gonna give entertainment the very solid score of a 4.5 out of a five rating. Next up is the P for ports, and uh, all I can say is amazing. Like, life-changing, the most enriching trip that I've ever been on, and that's all because we were in Japan. The best place I've visited so far, and I have no hesitations in saying that. I have been so captured and was so blown away by Japan, and also South Korea. We visited South Korea as well. I really enjoyed that. Now, I will have to say, I was a little apprehensive about this itinerary, because when I first booked it, um, there was like one other Japanese port on the itinerary and like another Korean port, I think. But over time, things got changed and the itinerary ultimately ended up being the first day was a day at sea. Then we stopped in Aburatsu, which is in the Miyazaki region of Japan. The next stop was Busan, South Korea, which was an overnight. And that was where the change came in. They like added Busan and then added an overnight. And I'm not a big fan of overnights. Like... I want to see as many places as I can on a cruise. So that was why I was apprehensive and like, I kind of want to cancel and like figure out something better to do in Japan, you know? But I did it and I'm very glad that I did. After we left Busan, we visited Nagasaki, Japan, and then we had a final sea day before we were back in the port of Yokohama, Japan, where we finished the cruise. I'm going to do a full vlog of all the shore excursions I went on and all the experiences I had. And I can't wait for you to see that because again, the best place I've ever been in my life. So uh, that'll be out soon, I promise. Um, but the morning we were in Aburatsu, like excitement because it started out with a tsunami warning and you'll have to watch the video to see how that ended up, but that was exciting. And then like I said, after that, we had two days in Busan. I got to go to a Buddhist temple, like way up a mountain and it was a beautiful view out. That was tremendous. And then uh, the second day did a tour around like the downtown area and have a great lunch. Good food everywhere we went. And I will say that all the excursions I did do on this cruise were through Princess. They were all Princess excursions. And I thought Princess did a tremendous job. I was actually very pleasantly surprised because I've cruised with a lot of cruise lines and done a lot of excursions with those cruise lines. And I don't think anything's ever flowed as smoothly and gone as smoothly and the tour's been as good as they were on this cruise. So kudos to the Shore Excursions team at Princess for that. And I guess my big message for ports is that you must cruise in Japan at some point or another. If you like cruising, if you like exploring new places, if you wanna get outside your comfort zone, if you wanna go somewhere you've never been before and experience cultures like you've never experienced before, I highly recommend you go to Japan. 
uh, just a beautiful place. The people there were so nice. The nicest people I think I've ever met in my life, ever been around in my life. I just really love Japan. I really love South Korea. I can't wait to go back. I'm already looking at like next year, like when can I get back to Japan? So for all those reasons, what else can I give the ports but a five out of a five rating? So lastly, we come to S and S is for service. Everyone was so nice on Princess. There were absolutely no issues at all with the service on board the ship. All the crew was fantastic. I'm trying to search one more time through my mind and like, was there an experience I can highlight that was bad or something bad that was happening? It doesn't come to me because I don't think it existed. Uh, really good service. My room attendant, uh, he was fantastic. I've really enjoyed uh, having him as my room server for the week. Every time I saw him in the hallway, it was like, you know, we didn't high five, but it was still was that type of energy. It was like, hey, you know, how are you? And we were just, it was like a friend, you know, all week. And he was fantastic. Probably one of the best room attendants that I've ever had. I can't say anything bad about service, so I can't give service anything, but a tremendous five out of a five rating. So I teased it at the top, and now I'm just gonna say it. The surprising element of it all, the reason this is, uh, this cruise was such a surprise. Again, I wasn't looking to go on Princess. Um, honestly, it was kind of a letdown because I was gonna be going on this 12-day cruise with this other cruise line. Then I got moved to, had to move to a seven day cruise. It was a lesser cruise to fewer ports. And then the ports got changed. Uh, you know, the itinerary got switched a few times and I was like, I should just cancel this and go to Japan on my own or on another cruise line some other time. So I really wasn't that excited. I was excited to go to Japan, but I wasn't excited about this cruise. I didn't expect this cruise to be like as great as it was. So that's why it was surprising. It was just, everything was like, you know, as perfect as could be. Nothing's ever perfect when you go on a cruise or when you do anything in life. But Princess, y'all, they have it figured out. And I had such a great cruise. You probably can tell it as I talk about it. Like, I'm just so happy about the experience that I had on Princess Cruises. And before I tell you the final score, when you average all those up to get the final score, and you don't always do that, I have done these uh, cruise reviews now. For every cruise I've been on since May of 2022, I believe, that's a lot of cruises. It's probably a good, you know, seven to 10 cruises there. This is the highest score that uh, I've ever given a cruise experience. And I didn't do that on purpose. I don't just go in with the score and say, I'm giving it this score. I know I actually, you know, do it like I do it with you. I'll walk through and say, oh, the, the ship, and I list reasons, pros and cons, and I score the ship. You know, I'm very meticulous with my scoring and my steps review process. So at the end, when I average everything, that's when I see what the score is, y'all, 4.42. Uh, and it's important that I say that 4.2, 4.42, and it just goes above my Celebrity Apex cruise last year. Celebrity Apex is still my favorite ship at sea, uh, but the Diamond Princess has moved up to my best cruise experience overall of any cruise that I've had, uh, at least since May of 2022, and I've been ranking these. So that was a surprising part. I didn't expect that. Uh, if you've never gone on Princess before, you should absolutely try it. I will definitely be back. I'm already looking. I haven't booked one yet, but I'm definitely looking to book my next Princess Cruise because that's how fantastic my experience on Diamond Princess was. Surprising, because I did not expect that. And I thought it was going to be like, well, glad I got to come to Japan. Mark that off the list. But I'm like, no, I came to Japan. I had a life-enriching trip. I'm going to be back to Japan. I'm going to be back on Princess and I absolutely cannot wait. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please go down below. Give me a thumbs up. Also consider, if you've not already, subscribing to the channel. I have a lot more cruise content to come from Diamond Princess and also some very exciting cruise content to come from new ships and new cruise lines very, very soon. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.